you're going to start seeing a lot more people at ball games. You're going to see people in movie theaters. You're going to see people in entertainment fora. I will almost be certain of that. We have 330 million people in the country, and you would expect that not every single person in the country is going to want to get vaccinated. But in fact, we're going to have enough. The more and more people get vaccinated, the more and more you're going to see an opening up of the flexibility of travel, both domestic and international. Right now, the CDC says if you're vaccinated, the risk of getting infected from traveling is very, very low. In fact, traveling on airplanes, particularly with the filtering system they have, even without vaccination, it's low, but you want to get vaccinated so you could make it very low and you can get back to traveling either for business or for pleasure, which I believe is going to be one of the positive consequences of more and more people getting vaccinated. If all goes well and people seriously take into consideration the importance of public health measures and just don't throw them to the wind, as it were, and more and more people get vaccinated, I believe by the time we get into the late spring, early summer, and through the summer, you're going to start seeing a lot more people at ball games. You're going to see people in movie theaters. You're going to see people in entertainment fora. I will almost be certain of that. I'm mindful that hesitancy might be an obstacle. Are you worried that that will prevent us from reaching herd immunity, whether in communities, we've heard about communities of color, or even by ideology, we've heard from a lot of conservatives hesitant to take the vaccine as well. It seems that some people don't want to get vaccinated or in a particular political persuasion. Uh, we've got to get away from that political thing and realize this is a public health issue that has already led to the death of over a half a million people in America. We've got to do everything we can by pulling together to end this terrible pandemic. And we can't be fighting with each other and disagreeing with each other. We are vulnerable and we've got to do everything we can to prepare for making sure that this does not happen again. There will be emerging infections for sure, no doubt. No matter what you do, new infections will emerge. The trick is how do you prevent an emerging infection from becoming a pandemic? And if you're well prepared, then you may be able to do that. When you have a global pandemic, you have to get a global response. And even if we get the overwhelming majority of our people vaccinated and we return to a degree and a very strong degree of normality, which I believe we will as we get into the summer, into the fall, into the late fall. It may not be 100% back to normal, but it'll be close enough that I think would relieve a lot of the stress that people are feeling. The problem that is a potential problem is that even if you contain the virus very well here in the United States, if you have the dynamics of an outbreak in other countries, particularly developing countries, there's always the risk of a variant coming back to this country and not being able to be well controlled by the vaccine that we're using. I don't think that's the case because I think our vaccines do pretty well against the variants. Maybe not protecting against complete infection, but certainly protecting against severe disease. Every single day, we get three to four million people closer to getting the majority of the population vaccinated. When we do, you're going to start to see that level of infection go down. But, it, you know, it's kind of like a tension between people wanting to get out there and be normal and not wait for the vaccine to be the ally of keeping things under control. It's an understandable urge but it is ill-advised to just lay caution to the wind right now. We need to hang in there a bit longer.